Hello and welcome to part 2 of video 3 of our course on mobile data collection using the Kobo toolbox. My name is Wilfred Ngwa. In our last video, I walk you through each of the 23 main question types you will find in the Kobo toolbox application and on how to create each of them. In this video, we will use a real life questionnaire I use for one of my projects to practice. You can download this questionnaire from my website. However, you will need to register for the course which is free of charge to have access. When you register, you will also have access to quizzes which follow each video. By completing this exercise, you will learn how to add skip logic patterns and validation criteria to your forms. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, give us some feedback, and share our videos so others can benefit as well. That said, let's get to business. To get started, let's have an understanding of the form we are going to be designing. It is a reporting form for adverse events following immunization AEFI. Just for the record, an adverse event following immunization is an unexpected medical occurrence which an individual may experience following the usage of a vaccine. The form is divided into two parts. The first part has the questions or the reporting elements. Then we have the second part that has a description of the reporting elements to provide a better understanding of how to complete the form. Now that we have an understanding of the form we're going to be designing, Let's move over to creating a new project. So I click on new, build from scratch. Now call my project reporting form for adverse events following immunization. I leave the short description blank, sector, let me call it health, country, Cameroon. And if you want Kobo to use your form to improve their services, you can check on this button and then create project. And there we go. We have our project reporting form for adverse events following immunization. Welcome back guys. 
if you have something that looks like this, I must say congratulations. However, I added one question here, unit of age of onset. Just to specify the units of the age of onset since the age of onset is a numerical variable. That notwithstanding, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put all of these questions into a group, which we are going to call the patient identifier. To do that, you hold down your control key and you select each question. Once you're done selecting all the questions, you go to this icon here and this message will pop up that says create group with selected questions. You click on it and you have a group. Then you rename your group to the name of your choice. In this case, we will give the name patient identifier. And there we go, we have our group. You can click on this small drop down menu here to minimize or to collapse the group and to expand. So there we go. So I'll go ahead and create the other sections. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how to add validation criteria and skip logic patterns to your farm. Welcome back friends. Again, if you got to this level, congratulations. Here we are with our complete form. Let's preview our form to see how it works at this level. To do that, I will click on the eye icon here. As you can see, our form is divided into five sections. I will input some data in the first section just for us to see how it works. So here I can put in CM01, the patient's name, Wilfred Ngwa, full address, Douala, Cameroon, telephone, have it here, sex is male, date of birth, I can scroll back, let me just take a date in 2017. Random date. Age of onset that should be about three. And then I put year. And then this is one to five. So one of the things you realize is that the age component is filled in so many times. And the form accepts for example we have date of birth then we have age then we have year then we have age group right we want a situation where we can put in date of birth and then we don't have to fill in this information again validation criteria allow you to avoid accidental or invalid answers especially with numeric questions. However, validation can be used on any question as well. Validation criteria are sometimes referred to as constraints. For example, you might want to restrict a question about age to numbers between 1 and 100. You may also want to restrict a date such that only the date of today can be entered. Skip logic, on the other hand, is sometimes referred to as branching or relevant conditions. As you can see with our form, by default, all questions are always visible. Skip logic enables a question to be displayed if and only if a certain condition or conditions is fulfilled. Let's get to practice. Let's assume that this form was only made for children who are 15 years and below. This will mean children born from the 1st of January 2005 and above. To add this validation criteria to the date of birth question, I will go to the date of birth question. I go to the settings button here to the right and then to the validation criteria here to the left. And I will now add a condition. 
As you can read, it says this question will be valid only if the following conditions apply, which means you can add more than one condition. But for now, we will just add only our one condition which we intended. So I'll come here, I go to greater than or equal to, and then here I'm typing 1st of January 2005. I can now save. If I preview my form and I go to the date of that question, type in a date in 2004, let's say 2004, 1st of January, then I have this error, value not allowed. Let me now put in a date in 2020. I just changed this to 2020 and you see the value is accepted. So that is how you add a validation criteria to your farm. The process of adding skip logic patterns is quite similar to that of adding validation criteria. Let's take a look at this question on adverse events. This is a multiple select question, so you can select multiple responses. So one thing you have to notice is that if you select other, then only will you have to specify the other adverse events. So we want this question to be displayed only if other is selected. Let's see how to do this. So I'll come to my question on other adverse events. I go to settings, then skip logic, then add condition, then select the question from the list. So the question here is adverse events. So I will look for it. Adverse events, then is equal to, then I go to other. So this question will only be displayed if other is selected on the adverse events. So let's save and preview our form. Here we are in the question on adverse events. As you can see, the question on specify other is not displayed. So if I select other, you see the question is displayed. If I deselect, it disappears. So that is how you can add skip logic patterns to your forms. The last thing I would like to show you is how to set question options. That is to make a question mandatory. To do that, we go again to settings, question options, and then we change from mandatory no to yes. If we save and we preview our form, Then you see you have an asterisk here, which tells you that this question is mandatory. So without you filling this question, you cannot move to the next. Thanks so much for watching and see you in our next video. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.